So let's take a look at the greater cardiac venous system first. Drainage through the greater cardiac venous system is primarily governed by the coronary sinus. As we can see here, the coronary sinus is located on the inferior aspect of the left atrium, coursing within the left inferior part of the coronary sulcus. Its function is to drain the majority of deoxygenated blood of the heart into the right atrium. It is a particularly wide, channel-like vein that is initially formed by the confluence of two veins. However, it also receives a number of other tributaries, all of which we will discuss in a moment. The great cardiac vein is the larger of the two major veins that form the coronary sinus. It originates at the apex of the heart and runs through the anterior interventricular sulcus next to the anterior interventricular artery. As it reaches the coronary sulcus, it passes to the left, accompanying the circumflex artery, before eventually draining into the coronary sinus. The great cardiac vein drains the anterior surface of both ventricles and the left atrium. Now the great cardiac vein itself commonly receives the left marginal vein as a tributary, which courses the left side of the heart, and it also drains part of the left ventricular myocardium. Now the vein which joins the great cardiac vein in forming the coronary sinus is the oblique vein of the left atrium. As the name suggests, this vein takes an inferior oblique course along the back of the left atrium to join the great cardiac vein in forming the coronary sinus. Unsurprisingly, this vein drains the left atrium. The next tributary is the inferior vein of the left ventricle, also known as the posterior vein of the left ventricle. This cardiac vein can be found on the inferior surface of the left ventricle. This vein drains the inferior and lateral walls of the left ventricle into the coronary sinus. One of the large tributaries of the coronary sinus is the middle cardiac vein, also known as the inferior interventricular vein. This vein ascends in the inferior interventricular groove and enters the coronary sinus on the opposite end to the great cardiac vein. It drains the inferior wall of both ventricles and the interventricular septum. The next tributary to the coronary sinus is the small cardiac vein. It can be found in the coronary sulcus, between the right atrium and the right ventricle, and it drains the inferior part of the right atrium and right ventricle into the coronary sinus. It should be noted that the small cardiac vein sometimes receives the right marginal vein as a tributary, which we can see here on the inferior margin of the anterior surface of the heart. However, in approximately two-thirds of individuals, the right marginal vein drains deoxygenated blood from the lateral part of the right ventricle directly into the right atrium, rather than via the coronary sinus. Phew! Well, that takes care of all the tributaries of the coronary sinus, I'm sure all of your time spent there won't be in vain. Now you might have noticed that we haven't yet mentioned these veins on the anterior view of the heart, which are the anterior cardiac veins, also known as the anterior veins of the right ventricle. That's because these veins do not drain into the coronary sinus. Instead, they collect deoxygenated blood from the anterior part of the right ventricle and drain directly into the right atrium. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.